Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Norristown Area High School. It's a PIAA 6A boys state quarterfinal between Archbishop Wood High School and Spring Ford High School. Bob Long, Jeff Sharilla, Bruce Badgley alongside. Let's meet the Rams of Spring Ford. Jacob Wynn is introduced first. A junior with high interest from Ivy League schools and high academic schools, Division I schools in the area. Matt Zollers, one of the top quarterback recruits in the country out of the junior class. Missouri, Georgia, Penn State all over him. He'll be a key here tonight. E.J. Campbell, a senior guard. He'll run the point. He'll handle the basketball, and he'll count on this next guy, number 24, Oban McConchu, a defensive force at six foot six. The fifth starter, Tommy Kelly, the 6'5", athletic wing. And now let's meet the number three seed out of District 12. They took down the champs of District 1, Lower Marion, on Wednesday in an instant classic. They'll wear white. Deuce Maxey introduced first, hit two big triples early on in that contest. Jalil Bethea, number six player in the country, depending upon where you look. An absolute stud and won that game for Archbishop Wood in the fourth quarter. Milan Dean can jump through the ceiling. One of the best blocking threats in the Philadelphia Catholic League and beyond. The Drexel commit Josh Reed. A lot of folks in University City excited for what he'll bring to the DAC next year. And to hear Howell, first year in the starting lineup for him. And it really is all guards and wings, Jeff, for this Archbishop Wood team. Hasn't really stopped them from dominating the glass and being a force at the rim defensively. That's right. They definitely get after that glass, and it's going to be a uh, an athletic competitor, the Spring Ford Rams. They are athletic, and they can shoot the lights out. It's going to be, I think, a little bit of a track meet. John Mosco against Joe Dempsey. Two coaches that have been at it for a long time. Spring forward, they'll wear the navy blue, and Archbishop Wood, as we mentioned, are in the white. Milan Dean will tip it off against Tommy Kelly. Bruce Badgley's with us here doing some camera and color commentary. Great to have you. Hey, thanks, Bob. I mean, uh, here we go. Ready for some uh, quarterfinal action here in 6A. Nothing better. The winner of this contest will play the winner of the 3 o'clock contest here from Norristown Area High School, Parkland and Roman Catholic. Yeah, I always like when that happens because usually the team that wins early will stick around and watch the other game. Too bad they couldn't get them on back-to-back. -back. You've got that uh, game in between, Bruce, that you'll be sticking around for. Half-court set creates an open shot for Jacob Wynn. And that's going to have to be a key for Spring Ford. Can really knock it down if he gets the feet set. Six foot four junior. As you said, a lot of interests, including Penn, Bucknell, William and Mary. Drexel also has an offer out to this fine shooting player. Josh Reed for the answer. Milan Dean. And that has to stop. Yep, great call there by that official. It hit the stanchion up top. What an unbelievable opportunity that was man that would have rocked the house just didn't have the hops <laughs> rare that you say that about milan dean that's for sure <laughs> he took off a little further away he was you know, not quite on his launching pad ej campbell and this is matt zollers win showing the ability to get a paint touch and Josh Reed pulls it down. Really good look from the corner. Milan Dean hangs with it. Jeffy went for that lob initially. And it got deflected, but they still picked up the loose ball for the bucket. Yeah, and I'm really anxious to see what kind of tempo this game is played at. Springs Ford's last game against uh, Springfield Delco was a real slugfest at 44-32. I think we're going to see a little bit more scoring than that today. Win again gets into the lane. Matt Zollers for three. And they are two for three to start the Spring Ford Rams from beyond the arc. And the QB knocking it down, as you said, Bob, in the open. One of the best quarterbacks in the country, number one in the state. And Josh Reed able to carve his way into the lane. <laughs> 
Kelly. And Wynn again is knocked down on the three, wasn't called. Yeah, Bruce, you talked about that, that game against Delco, Springfield Delco. They, they, 45-32. Oh, 45-32, yeah. Yeah, 45-32, 29% shooting was the opponent in that game. So that tells you how good the defense was, but, again, not a lot of offense. Reed gets into the lane, high off the... Oh, uh, God. Yep. Inside goes Springford. Great look, and Tommy Kelly finishes amongst the traffic. Bethea, really tough shot, and Springford just can't get on the glass there. It'll be a held ball situation. Yep. It should be Wood because Springford won the tip. But that was going to be the question about the athleticism of Archbishop Wood, Bruce, and Wood... Spring Ford be able to match up defensively. They've done a nice job in the half court. Yeah, they have, and I'm really anxious to see who controls the boards here. Well, it's been Archbishop Wood thus far. Tommy Kelly sticking like glue to Bethea. And they coerce the travel. Wow. Good on ball defense by EJ Campbell. Yeah, Campbell definitely holding up the action, holding the penetration, caused the stutter step, caused the travel. Bob Long with the replay. <laughs> we do what we can. Thanks, everybody, for watching here today and for being with us early as we hit high noon. That ball was in the air right at about high noon here today. It is a triple header and 90 minutes in between games, so if you don't start on time, you're not going to get back on time. And what happens if there's overtime? Uh-oh. And a grab is called on the dribble drive. Nice job by Campbell to slice up the defense. Scoreboard not keeping up. There we go. There's a foul. Yep, good call. Bruce, the jack of all trades. Bruce is doing the camera, the color commentary here today. We expect Alex Shevchuk. There was some traffic getting here so we hope everybody's all right you know who's definitely all right spring Ford. they got 10 points in the first three and a half minutes and a four-point lead mike green and brady mcadams just checked into the game what a night for mike green against lower marion and i think spring Ford just got the scouting report yes they did bethaya and another offensive rebound fading away Jaleel Bethea cuts it to two. Bethea in the books. Yeah, and he had a little bit of a slow start the, the last game. Nice to see him to get on track early tonight, or to this afternoon. McConshu traveled with it. He was good until he started to turn, and he lifted his pivot foot. We'll get another good yeah, look Yeah, the foot here. was sliding. I like his uh, his frame at 6'5", only a sophomore. He's, uh, he's going to be a, a force for our next couple of years. Yeah, it was that left foot that was the pivot foot. He really didn't need to lift that up to go into that move. It was an excellent move. Bethea. Almost always two are going to come to him. How about this matchup? Matt Zollers against Jalil Bethea. And the Jalil Bethea coerces the foul. It was a good switch. Zoller had the good D and then... Mokanchu, I believe, is going to be called for the foul. Yeah, Mokanchu. How about the flyby? Mm -hmm. Took a hit, too, didn't he? Oh, and now Zollers and Jalil Bethea are getting into it. Hey, look, it's pretty intense out there already. Nose to nose on that replay. Two competitors. Two Division I recruited athletes, two different sports. Great cut to the basket. Better find by Milan Dean, and that is what Wood looks like when they're humming, Jeff. Reed gets free, easy basket. And a warning goes against John Mosco. Not five minutes into the contest. We saw the technical against Mathacton that 
Bob, as you pointed out, once you get that tech, he has to sit. And once again, you look at that Archbishop Wood <laughs> bench. Not that anybody's anticipating a technical, but every seat is currently accounted they for. They are. They're going to have to bring one in. Musical chairs. Uh, those are my Berks County boys out there officiating today, Bob. Count it and one for E.J. Campbell. Took Mike Green to the hole. Protected the ball with his left, scooped it with his right. He's got an offer from Ryder, and if you look at him, look at this move. He's recruitment is still open. The senior looking wow. to try to go to the the next level, and we'll see where he ends up, where he matriculates, as they like to say. That's right. I do want to go back to Matt Zollers against Jaleel Bethea. I don't think it's the last time we'll see it. We saw them get into each other's faces. Joe Dempsey said, listen, you know, Jaleel Bethea, maybe the best high school basketball player in the country, but he thinks that they have the toughest kid on the floor in Matt Zollers, everything that he can do on the football field. Maybe the sharpest shooter on the floor might be Mike Green that hit that one from the elbow. And a shout-out to his grandmother. Was it Nancy who stopped by? That's right. Stopped up to the booth. Kelly, great cut off the ball. Oh, my. Jordan Marsilio, such confidence on the reverse. And he's involved in the pickpocket. Marsilio again. That one's blocked by Brady McAdams. Oh, my goodness. Bodies hit bodies, and then a body hits the floor. I was screamed, Bob. What did you see? That was a big, big hit there. Big hit. So Milan Dean goes up to get the ball. 50-50 basketball. Tommy Kelly goes down. And that right arm is a little limp right now. Hopefully just a stinger. It's a 15-12 lead for Springford, playing to the pace that they would like. E.J. Campbell defended by Deuce Maxey. Beautiful. E.J. Campbell, if he plays like this, Springford has upset on the mind. Nice mid-range shot. He can... Campbell picks up the nickel dimer there as he reaches in. He can he can handle the ball, he can shoot the ball, and he is an athlete, as they say. Really, really aggressive defense by Spring Ford in that zone out high. We want to welcome the fourth member of our broadcast crew, Alex Shevchuk, is with us here. Alex, good afternoon. How you doing, Bob? <laughs> Whoa, he's, he's I don't know. How are you doing? <laughs> Definitely the traffic got got to me, but I'm glad that I'm here. I, I saw something on my phone about a road rage incident. I think that was you trying to get here. <laughs> oh, yeah. I had to get here for this powerhouse game between Springford and Archbishop Wood. Just such, such a powerful and exciting game for both teams to make it into the semifinals for the state playoffs. So some wholesale substitutions. Blake Turner, the sophomore guard, able to spell Campbell. He's going to have to do that here. When Campbell isn't on the ball, it's Turner to do that. Jaleel Bethea. He tried to draw the foul for the plus one with Zoller closing out. But he didn't get it. But count the triple. McConchu slips. Slipped to the hole and now has an opportunity to launch it for three. Well short. Yeah, it just wasn't his look from there. And they give the foul and McConchu gave him a little hip check and Jaleel Bethea did not like it. Uh, Bethea's fired up early. I mean, he's really into this one. I think last game he was trying to get the team involved. I think it's going to be the Bethea show today from what it looks like. Yeah, listen, trying to be a little physical there. Give him the benefit of the doubt, McConchu, but Spring Ford, I think, wants to get under his skin. I think they have seen at times that 
There is a lot of emotion on this Archbishop Wood roster, and it's why they've been so good all year, Jeff. They mm. harness that energy on the good way, but at times they can get frustrated. Yeah. It can bleed through. Bethea needs to stay under control. We've seen him not back down, but he's got to do it in control. Julio Bethea couldn't hit the deep triple. So Springford with 17 points on the board and the ball in hand under 40 seconds to go. It's a really nice first eight-minute period for the Rams. A lot of contact. A foul was not called. Ducey was all over Zoller. There's the lob, and Josh Reed put it in. 20 seconds left. I cannot believe that there was not a call yeah, I can't on Deuce Maxey on the farther side of the floor. I can't either, Bob. And there's your makeup there on the shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder contact. And Matt Zoller's just picked up a technical foul. And, oh, and, and Bethea and just walked Bethea. right into him, right into his chest. You just got to love the intensity here early, guys. And I don't know if we'll get this here as Bethea. I do think we're just going to miss it. But right at the end there. He just walked right into he, Zoller's and, chest. He didn't even. Didn't make an effort to get out of the he way. He was not trying to avoid contact. Wow, I don't think that's the way that Springford saw this first quarter going in the effort to try to get under the skin of Archbishop Wood. That it would be Matt Zoller's. And they are jawing at each other as well. Off screen, Zoller's was barking at Jaleel Bethea. And now Bethea is looking left to the Springford contingent of fans. So he knocks down one of two, and as your point, Bob, Springford had the ball, two-point lead, 40 seconds to go. Now, all of a sudden, they're down one, playing defense to try to hold on here in this last 9.6 seconds. With a technical foul on their star athlete. Look for Bethea to launch a three, one-on-one. -on -one. Tommy Kelly defends. Deuce Maxi, brilliant feed, and that ends the first quarter. Archbishop Wood puts up 20. And what was an early cushion for Spring Ford has more than evaporated, Bruce. Yeah, and I like the fact that Wood came out with a sense of purpose. I think they were a little bit slow getting started in the last game that they played, but today... They came out knowing full well what they had to come out and do, uh, play aggressive, play physical, and that's what they did in quarter number one. Jeff, what do you think? Yeah, I think everything was great to the last 40 seconds. And it <laughs> just, uh, like uh, Bob was saying about the the Archbishop Wood trying to stay composed because Bethea at times can get a little uh, tight. Not tight, that's not the right word, but aggressive with his uh, demonstrative. How about that? We'll use that word as... He gets demonstrative and, and, and is not afraid to mix it up. And the flip side is Springford Zollers is the one who got caught. And the technical swings the action. The score on top for Archbishop Wood to take the lead heading into the second. Faulkner Infinity has sponsored the telecast on the way through the state playoffs for Archbishop Wood. Let's hear about our feature sponsor here tonight. Faulkner Infinity of Willow Grove is the number one Infinity dealer in the region. Faulkner has received the Infinity Award of Excellence given to only 10 dealers nationwide for outstanding customer satisfaction. You'll enjoy our easy, no pressure atmosphere, whether you buy online, in person, or a little of both. We offer loaner vehicles for service or pick up and drop off of your vehicle to make service as convenient as possible. Come find out why. More people choose Faulkner Infinity to be sure. Second quarter about to get underway here from Norristown Area High School. What a great gym this is. I don't know, Bruce, Jeff, if you guys have ever been here before for a game of any kind, but this is a wonderful spot to watch a game. Well, you can understand why the PIAA searches this gym out because, as you said, Bob, just a perfect facility. Cozy, but a lot of room, if that makes sense. It, may, it makes sense. Absolutely. Zollers double teamed in a tough spot. There's Wynn. Jacob Wynn, who knocked down an early triple to get things started. Yeah, and I think they've got to get him going again. They've got to spread that wood defense out. He's going to have to be a contributor. 
Kelly now, skip pass, nice catch. Give it right back, and it's blocked by Milan Dean. That's a tough call. My oh. goodness, that's a tough call. I would have spring for maybe fan. a walk before the well, collision. Well, I think he was tripped by Jaleel Bethea. I mean, keep an eye here. He goes into him head first because he was tripped. Yeah, he was stumbling. <laughs> Rumbling, stumbling, bumbling. That's there. right. Heck of a block, though. Oh, that's unbelievable. Great closeout and the save. Green on the slip. Milan Dean, good look for Jaleel Bethea. They'll reset and step back and barely drew the iron. Win, you got to close out on him. They don't. That's a missed assignment there for Mike Green. Win's not a guy that's going to beat you to the basket. Green for the answer. And Zollers brought it down. Yeah, as you said, Bob, Win is just confident and smooth. He's not going to use his he's going to use his height to shoot not his dribbling to blow by you that's where this i think half court trap he's got to become more of a ball handler beautiful offense there three is no good saved in bounds and ej campbell who's the last to touch it Neither of these officials Deuce. has the call. Oh, they did, they couldn't. It looked wow. like Deuce might have been the one that Deuce Maxey might have knocked it out. But if you don't know, you tie goes to the jump ball. Yeah. What do you see, Bob? Wow. Uh, that, that was kind of a mosh pit over there. <laughs> yeah, it's a tough angle. If they didn't see it from that close, hard for me to say. <laughs> Good crew here today. Like you said, Bruce, coming from Berks County. Bethea, good hands in there by Kelly. Reed. Oh, just let him go. And that's too strong there in the lane as he goes up and over Zollers. He was just kind of looking, waiting to see if somebody was going to come out after him. Well, and I think the scouting report there is to let Josh Reed shoot the three. So they sag off him, but Bruce, to your point, you can't sag off him that much. Great hands. Reed. Bethea, no. And Josh Reed just stays on it. That was a man's battle at the rim. Zollers going up to contest on Reed. He does just enough there. Good no call. And then Bethea just a little too strong, and Green stays after it. And it looked like Wynn in there on the foul. Well, I just love the early intensity here by Art Bishop. But even, John, even Coach Bosco is really uh, fired up. Alex Shevchuk with us here from your camera perch. What are you seeing? I mean, I see all the aggressiveness coming from this Archbishop Wood team. Just like Bruce said, even Mo Coach Moscow has that aggressiveness and fire in him. And that's what I would expect from this Archbishop Wood team, especially from number one, Jalil Bethea. He always wants to kind of get that energy going. And like you said earlier, Wood uses it in the better way for them to get in the lead. Missed them both, though, a 60% foul shooter on the year. Now Campbell, win. That's a great kick. Zollers hits one from that spot, and that was halfway down. And that'll stay here. But that's what win win's got to do. He's got to penetrate. He's got to facilitate. It was a good look by Zollers, just no finish. Wide open look. By the way, I hear a lot of that, Bruce, especially if you follow Penn State or any other college recruiting. I asked Joe Zemsey, Zollers or Zollers? And we were told Zollers. But I think just about every recruiting person calls him Zollers. So. It's a PA thing. Hey, he, he's just thankful <laughs> that he's got a lot of people, a lot of recruiters call, right. calling his name. That's right, yes. Four thirty to go. Dean steps into one, and that stays here. Yeah, it was Campbell and Zollers, and he didn't realize that it was his teammate that had touched it as well. Delangelo checking in. Zollers goes out. 
Boy, just a really fast moving first half thus far. Maybe they'll start that 130 game early. <laughs> uh, I don't think so. <laughs> but they are off the down screen. A little short. Two point game. Archbishop Wood, it feels like they've had the run of play since the second quarter started. And yet, here come the Rams. Jacob Wynn knocks it down from three. That's his third triple of the day. So smooth. Yeah, and as I said, you know, he's the key because if he starts knocking, continues to knock those down, that's got to draw the Wood defense out to him, and that's going to open up more lanes to the basket for Zollers and some of the other guys. And you know what? A little Villanova 2016 kind of natural screen. Mm, the rub. Win is the trailer. Campbell drops it off. Tough for that defender to close out. Nylon and a one-point lead. Zollers will check back in. Midway through the second. We already have what's hopefully going to become an instant classic. That's right. Heading that direction, Jeff, no doubt about it. Alex Shevchuk on the camera, Bruce Badgley, Jeff Sharilla, Bob Long here. Folks, want to thank you for watching. Make sure to like the channel here, Bob Long Sports. This is an Archbishop Wood-sponsored broadcast. Also, Faulkner Infinity sponsoring the action. Make sure you like the video. Subscribe to the channel. That really helps us. And we're also on Twitter and Instagram. So if you like big time high school basketball and other sports matchups, make sure you check out Bob Long Sports. Deuce Maxi on the baseline. Walled off there by Campbell. I love how they just do that weave on the outside to see what kind of... And that's oh, a that, technical that's be a foul. Technical. It is. It has to be a technical foul, and Joe Dempsey is saying the same thing. So, and it's 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 nothing that, again, Reed is thinking about in the moment. However, if you touch the basketball after a missed dunk while you are still hanging on the rim, that is a technical foul. Seems like the refs aren't going to call it a technical foul, though, and it will just be normal play for Springford. Yeah, I couldn't hear what they said at the scorer's table. There are certain technical fouls where there are no foul shots that come from it, but I have not seen a foul go on the board. And that's another one. Maybe that foul would not go on the board. I have seen that three times now at the high school level, though, and I've never seen it called as a technical foul. E.J. Campbell, though, a four-point lead for Springford. And Wood's going to have to start to extend that defense. These guys are making some big ones. Makanchu pulled down the rebound. And this is what's so important if you're going to play an Archbishop Wood team that is this athletic. To have a solid ball handler, get a paint touch, and that should stay here. Yeah, it looked like it was off of Thea. But the Rams really crash in the boards. But my overall point in Jeff is you see when teams get run out of the building by Philadelphia Catholic League teams, it's because they can't handle the pressure. Springford has struggled with that at times. Last year they were in the state semifinal, really struggled with the pressure of a Reading team defensively. They are more prepared for this moment. Great position inside for Tommy Kelly. And by the time he caught it, it was too late. Yeah, he got him in deep, and you don't need to make a lot of moves when you post up that deep. Maxi smooth in the lane. That is just a, a great shot. And not only it was that made basket there, but it really sets up the fact that they're going to have to start to get out on him. Well, they've moved Jaleel Bethea on to E.J. Campbell. That's a good adjustment by John Mosco. The rider recruit against the Miami commit. And this time they're closing out on win. I would too after the three triples that he's hit. And Milan Dean getting that assignment. Zollers. Well, that's a mismatch. Zollers and Bethea. Here we go, folks. Zollers is hammered. And Jaleel Bethea, I'm not really sure what he's arguing about. He's saying I got the ball, but he... Had he, the reach as well. Uh, he did not get the ball. Yeah. I, that, that was <laughs> a, I'm saying what he said. Sure. Hack with a capital H there. Woo. 
Yeah. There's a lot of left wrist action. Slow it down as much as we can here. Zollers misses the first. Just one team foul against Archbishop Wood here in the second quarter. As Bruce said, this, these quarters are flying by. Zollers is struggling. Missed a couple of threes from each corner and now a couple of free throws. But I think all the shots, have, especially from the field, have been good. Good Green, looks. no. Zollers got two hands on it. Reed went down in the process. Fighting on the glass. Matching the intensity of Archbishop Wood. And Coach Mosco is just smiling and chatting up the official here in the by the half-court stripe. Joe Dempsey, he coached 15 years at LaSalle College High School. Here's this for a stat. He is 12-0. and 0. Kelly has to pick this one up. Yeah, Win and it's foul. Second team foul against Archbishop Wood here in the second quarter. Yeah, not a bad foul, but it looks like Coach Dempsey trying to work for a last shot. Well, I don't, I don't know about that necessarily. I think they were having some trouble there with the pressure of Archbishop Wood. Finish your story. Twelve and zero. Twelve and zero. Thank you, Jeff. In the first and second rounds of the PIAA nice. state tournament, six different trips at two different spots. So wow. you're saying he's never gotten past the third round. That's not true either. Oh, oh yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. 12 and 0. That's not uh, They went all the way to a state final. Did LaSalle. Mondine count it and won. Win got him up top on the head. Well, trying to get a starburst out of the pocket here. <laughs> you know, Bruce, no one has the context, so when you say it, you now have to explain it. Well, it's uh, for any and one, our buddy uh, Matt Paul, who coaches AAU, anytime he gets a player who uh, gets a basket and an and one and makes the free throw, sometimes he's giving him a sidebar, sometimes even out on the court. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and my apologies, Bob, you're right about the uh, going to a final in 2014 in the that's 4A right. classification. So I uh, And that's 4A, which is now 6A. Which it was, was the, old, the old big school. That's right. And then just last year, Spring Ford went all the way to the state semifinal. Lemon. <laughs> Lemon starburst there. That's a tricky stat, Bob. 12-0 in the first two rounds. I brain, brain fog. That's all right. It's a tricky stat, but it is an incredibly impressive stat. I mean, you think Andre Noble, Carl Aragel, and that's just reaching out of the back pocket. I, I assume that those two guys have not lost in the first two rounds. There may be others that have done it in six trips or so. It's hard to imagine, though. For the unofficial official scores. And a technical foul has been called against Jaleel Bethea. Yeah, they finally had enough. So now Zollers with a technical foul. Jaleel Bethea with a technical foul. And we have 43 seconds left in the first half. The intensity is not done. It's only going to ratchet up. A little bit too much passion coming from this Wood team arguing the call, but it was a good call. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure why you know, the, the foul wasn't even on Bethea. I, I, I'm not even sure why he even bothered to get in on that. Well, he didn't like the call. <laughs> well, yeah, but but it's one, Bruce, to your point, I think the point you were getting at is they're not in the bonus. They're not sending Spring Ford to the line. So, okay, you don't love the foul call. What's it much matter? It you doesn't know? matter at all. Certainly you could have had a turnover perhaps, and that's a great look to Kelly. Kelly. Milan Dean stands tall. It's a great defensive play without leaving the floor. Bethea against Campbell. He was contested by Matt Zollers, and Bethea to the line for two. You know, he's done a great job this postseason in situations like that, passing, but in that particular case, took it right to the basket and got the foul. And he was good up top with Zollers, and then once 
Bethea let go of the basketballs. Ollers kind of brought down the right hand and got him. Looks like we have a little housekeeping to do. Speaking of housekeeping, in my unofficial, official unofficial stats, was that Green, I'm sorry, Dean that had the three-point play? Yes. On the last end, thank you very much. I want to try to be as accurate as possible and... Shirilla Gorilla stats are. Yeah. <laughs> I trust Officially them. unofficial. But they has missed two free throws here today, unlike him. Yep, yep, that's the second miss. 90% are on the year. And another wow. one just a bit short. 19 seconds left. Let's see if they close out this quarter better than they did the last. Speaking of Springford. Seven seconds left. Kelly puts up a tough shot. And did they call a foul there? I think they oh did, and they're going to shoot. Oh, my goodness. That is a that's a difficult call, Bruce. I know they're your Berks County guys. Well, wow. sometimes you almost have to, and it looks like he got it pretty good on the side of the head. I don't know if he did, Bruce. I, re, uh, I don't know if he did. Wow. So point three seconds left. A loose ball found 94 feet from the basket. Archbishop Wood fans are loving it. But I think most third-party fans <laughs> in the building here. Whoo, man. Yeah, you got to get bodies under there because a miss. Right. You can still tap it in. Yep. You can still catch and release at yep. 0.3 seconds. Anything yeah. less, it has to be a tip. You could even tip it in, of course, from here. And Archbishop Ooh. Wood is just. There is a lid they are from the free throw line. Forfeiting these opportunities at the line. And Joe Dempsey. Technical foul to both John Mosco and Joe Dempsey. <laughs> Does that mean they're both sitting? They both have to sit the rest of the way. Joe Dempsey has a case, period, point blank. And there have been times over the contest where John Mosco has had a case as well. And... They're both going to be in timeout for the next two quarters. <laughs> They're restoring order here as they cool off with point three to go and a free throw to come. Second one for Dean. That one does go, and it becomes a one-point game going to half. One of the more Woo. entertaining, albeit disjointed, first halves that I can remember in a state quarterfinal matchup here at the 6A level. Bruce, what are you, uh, you catching your breath? No, no, no. I, uh, as Bob, I, I really was having a hard time. Neither team really seemed to get any in into any kind of flow. Maybe spring forward there a little bit with the win and his, with his uh, win and his you know, three-pointers in that. But, uh, no, I don't think either team really got in any good offensive rhythm. And uh, I think that the second half, I think both of these coaches are going to have to try and rein these guys in, play under control, and play with some structure. Alex Yevchuk, let's go to you. Yeah, Bob, I think Archbishop Wood has been a little bit trigger-happy with the shots, especially early into their possessions. Unlike Springford, they've been taking their time under – Coach Nemsey, and he's been kind of moving the ball around, finding that best possible shot. And that's kind of why they kind of got back into that lead in the second quarter. I think that if Archbishop Wood kind of found that better shot, they have the guys who can make it and they can win this game. 
but it's only going to happen if they slow the pace down. I think basketball fans all across the state of Pennsylvania are being treated to a tremendous contest between two different styles. Jacob Nguyen has been a real star for spring forward. He's been knocking it down with efficiency all year long. He's got three triples here today. Matt Zollers, he has matched the intensity of Jalil Bethea and Josh Reed. And then for Archbishop Wood, I think Milan Dean has done a nice job defensively, contesting near the rim, uh, allowing Jaleel Bethea to go at it offensively as Reed and Bethea, uh, you know, both of them are the stars offensively. You've had Reed and Milan Dean on the glass. So both teams have had subsets of their offensive game and defensive game that's been successful, but a little disjointed. We've seen back and forth from the players, from the coaches, to the officials, from the officials, and I am hoping for a little bit more flow. Jeff, yeah, in the yeah that, half. that's the that's the thing. The officials are trying to restore order. We've seen four technical fouls <laughs> in the first half. One on, on could, have, the, could, have, could have been a fifth on the hanging from the rim. Yeah, yeah. Could, could, and probably could have been. A, so you had you had uh, Bethea picked up one. Zollers has one. Both coaches with point three on the clock. So the flow. It, it's tough to get a flow when you've got arguing and and you've had Bethea versus Zollers. On that technical, bumping into each other yep. on the way to the free throw line, and you know, it's just. Yeah. Hopefully, I mean, it's, the, both teams want it, yep. and, and they're both skilled. They're both. I mean, you look at it; you have four Division One basketball athletes, two for each side, and then you have a football Division One athlete with Zollers adding a, to the mix, and a, a guy who's just as incredibly talented on the football side as Jaleel Bethea is on the basketball side. Exactly, exactly. We'll take a quick break and come back in just a minute here on Bob Long Sports and an Archbishop Wood school-sponsored broadcast. Faulkner Infinity of Willow Grove is the number one Infinity dealer in the region. Faulkner has received the Infinity Award of Excellence given to only 10 dealers nationwide for outstanding customer satisfaction. You'll enjoy our easy, no pressure atmosphere, whether you buy online, in person, or a little of both. We offer loaner vehicles for service or pick up and drop off of your vehicle to make service as convenient as possible. Come find out why. More people choose Faulkner Infinity to be sure. Halftime here, folks, from Norristown Area High School. And for halftime, we have a very special guest, Josh Berlin from City of Basketball Love. Thank you for being here. Of course, as always, Bob. It's Thank a, you for having me. a triple header at Norristown Area High School. Not a better way to spend a day. I'm always hoping for double headers in the state playoffs. Sure. And then, of course, you know, Wednesday night, it's like, or Thursday morning, I should say, they come out with the times and triple header at Norristown no brainer I'm That's here right. so uh three fantastic games on slate we're you know only a sixth of the way through it I'm really excited for the day that's great Jeff Shirilla by the way my partner I don't know if you guys have gotten a chance yeah. to meet yeah I'm yes. absolutely yes, Very good. yes we have he confirmed the record for Springport okay. because the PIAA had messed it up so Springport comes in at 23 and 7 okay okay so Josh what have you taken away from 16 minutes Honestly, the first thing I think is Springford's composure and poise. I mean, and we saw that from Methaxon, we saw that from Lower Murrian, but these teams have not come out scared against a, you know, Catholic League side that's got two, you know, high level Division One players. I was really impressed with the way Springford came out. They've been taking confident shots, they're hitting them, which that certainly helps, but I think the offense of the ball movement, they have not really gotten thrown off too much by Woods pressure. Well, certainly that's gonna ramp up as the game goes on, but right. so far I've been really impressed with the way that Springport has just handled the atmosphere. I think that was the biggest key for them coming in. And it feels to me like Matt Zollers has taken it personally about 
Julio Bethea's ranking. Of course, Josh Reed. We know how talented he is on the football field, and he has matched that intensity. There are not many guys who, when Josh Reed goes up for a dunk, are able to block that shot, as Dollars did cleanly from behind there in the second quarter. And, you know, all spring long, I don't want to say all season long, but all, all January and February when he was out with a broken foot, we kept writing, they're, they're missing a key element with him. They're missing a key element with him. And even though he is a football standout and they've got other basketball standouts on the court, you see what he brings to them, that, the extra size, the athleticism, the shot making. I mean, if he wasn't a high major Division One football quarterback, he would be a scholarship level basketball player. No doubt. No doubt about that. So you see in this game really what he brings to the floor with all those elements. And the one thing that I noticed is he got two great looks. This could be a six, seven point lead. He, I mean, nobody closed out on him. He just didn't convert. And so if he knocks those down, and to your point, Josh, uh, win, he's so composed and on the, on, on the break transition, uh, Archbishop Wood sagged off of him, and he knocked down another yeah. three, and he's uh, he's one of our leading scorers here at halftime. He's been out shooting to Lil Bethea thus far, and, you know, I, mean, I think if you came into it, there would be a few keys, and, you know, certainly Springfield handling the atmosphere. I think the rebounding battle is going to be big, and Wood's been winning that so far, but certainly then of of, of the sharpshooters, Bethea versus Wynn, who goes off, who has the better day so far. Right now, it's Jacob Wynn. Right, yeah, and from a standpoint of the coaching matchup, we talked about this a lot in the three game. Joe Dempsey... Uh, an incredible record, 12-0 and in the first and second round in six trips to the PIAA State playoffs in two different stops. He knows how to play in these moments. We know the success of John Mosco, state champion, state runner-up, multiple state semifinals. This is as good as it gets, and they got into it with one another, two old friends, I will say. Yeah, I, I was going to say, they, uh, these two have gone back quite a bit uh, to, the, to the LaSalle newman Gretti days. Right. And certainly two guys that know each other's styles really well, and it's you know, it's an intense atmosphere. I think the referees are uh, maybe feeding into that a little bit here. We've got some technicals and, and all that. I'm curious to see what the energy is like as we start the second half. But, yeah, really good uh, half. I don't know. Have, you, have we broken down stats yet? I do have shooting stats. Let's do it. So Springford right now, 11 for 24 from the floor, 5 for 12 from 3, uh, 2 for 5 from the foul line. Neither team shooting free throws right uh, real well. Both teams, two turnovers. Wood, 12 for 26 from the floor, 1 for 9 from 3, 3 for 9 from the foul line. Wow. And your leading scorers win with 12. This is the Jeff Sherilla officially unofficial stats. I have win with 12. <laughs> yes. And on uh, Reed uh, with 10 for, uh, for yes. Archbishop Wood. There you go. See, comparing stats. You guys. <laughs> well, you've got the shooting numbers. I yeah. got, and, and the free throws are the big thing. You miss. This is a team. But Thea missing a free throw, a 90 percenter, and you've only, you, you, you leave six, right. a 33 percent in the first half is just not Archbishop Wood basketball. Yeah. Jaleel Bethea is two for eight from the floor, one for four from the foul line. Wow. I mean, that's not Jaleel Bethea numbers. Uh, with his former future head coach, Jim Laranaga, watching in the corner. Right, right. Uh, I also want to say I've been impressed by Milan Dean. Uh, he's got uh, six points, three rebounds, three assists, two steals, and a block already. So he's really been stuff in this hat. I have to ask, how are you taking awesome photos <laughs> and keeping shooting statistics? I can barely, I'm like, hey, hey, uh, can you tell me who scored? I missed him. I was blocked out. How are <laughs> you doing make it? make it up. No. Uh, <laughs> I, I've gotten the rhythm down over right. the years. So, I, you know, I, I think most... Photographers will take a thousand photos during a game. I only take 150 to 200. So but they're great. When to shoot, when to, when to stack keep. They're great. They're Thank great. You. Appreciate it. Great Appreciate segue. It. Before you go, where can folks find your coverage? Uh, they can go check us out, cityofbasketballlove.com. Or we're on social media at hooplove215. I also want to give a huge shout-out to all my writers. I feel like I don't do this enough. We've got Ryan Coyle, Kevin Gamlin, and Dan Arkins down there right now uh, covering the various games today. We've got Joe Santaliquido coming for the third one today. Owen McHugh, my assistant editor, who I couldn't do any of this without, is just awesome. So all of our writers, Andrew Robinson, they've just been incredible all year long, and they really deserve so much of the credit. I agree with you. They're awesome. <laughs> it's yeah. a great site. You guys Thank do a you. great job. As do you, Bob. As thanks, you. buddy. Thanks. It's great. When we see you around here, we know it's a big game. So thanks for being with Absolutely. us. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Great, All right. great, great, great. Josh Berlin with us. And enjoy that second half.
Faulkner Infinity of Willow Grove is the number one Infinity dealer in the region. Faulkner has received the Infinity Award of Excellence given to only 10 dealers nationwide for outstanding customer satisfaction. You'll enjoy our easy, no-pressure atmosphere, whether you buy online, in person, or a little of both. We offer loaner vehicles for service or pick up and drop off of your vehicle to make service as convenient as possible. Come find out why. More people choose Faulkner Infinity to be sure. Thanks so much to Josh Verlin for spending some time with us. He really does an excellent job. Those are not just empty plaudits. His staff does a great job, too. I mean, they help us to prepare, and uh, they have a ton of coverage in the area. So the, thanks to City of Basketball Love. Yeah, their, uh, their write-ups are, are phenomenal. If you just, you know, I, I could read a, the pros of, of what to expect from these players, but they're just very in-depth and very, very good. So it's a one-point lead for Spring Ford. Great defense by Deuce Maxey. That's the stop that Archbishop Wood needed coming out of the break. Milan Dean for three. Makanchu brings it down. Halfway down, just not getting it to go. Zollers with his back to the basket. Jacob Wynn. I just, wow. Incredible. <laughs> A five-second call. So no. he's at the L of Eagles, and he's going to end up inside the elbow. Is he, or was he the call oh offensive on a push? No, it was five. I think, well, may, maybe it was, but. Yeah, the, they, they put a foul up on the board. Okay, all right, fair enough. Fair but, enough. Well, that's, but that's, that would be a Springford foul. Right, which was what it would be. Okay, fair yeah, enough. Yep, well, yep. put it this way. The official was counting. He absolutely was counting the five. There's the bucket for Josh Reed. That's a great cut off the ball to the basket. When you looked away, Bob, I did see the official put his hand behind his head signaling that that was Good. an offensive All foul. All right, fair enough. Keep your blood pressure down. <laughs> <laughs> I still wanted to stop counting the five seconds earlier when you start making progress yes, to the basket. Yes, agree, agree. Here comes E.J. Campbell. We didn't see a lot of Mokinchu in the first half. I don't know what their minutes break down to, but he's certainly a wide body, and they've got a lot of depth that they can rotate people in and out. Matt Zollers. Dean doing a great job on Matt Zollers. Here's Mokinchu. Step back. And Deuce Maxey, a great job to seal off. The rebounder there trying to get in, Kelly. Probably not the shot that Joe Dempsey wanted on that possession. No, but a, a good move there by Maxie. I'll tell you what, he's yeah. contributing he is. on every aspect of the game so far. Had a really nice shot in the lane to create some space and get into the interior of that defense. Tough shot there. Oh, what a look. <sighs> Foul called, and that'll send Tahir Howell to the line for two. Certainly would have been a tough shot if Reed went up with it. Double and even triple checked there in midair. Yeah, absolutely. I think he got up in the air there. He was lucky to find somebody to pass to. Reed will be joining former Wood guard himself, Justin Moore, at Drexel next year. So that backcourt will be Wood filled with athleticism. And the shot from Justin Warren. That, that's a great call, Alex. And the slashing from Josh Rude. Another miss from the foul line. They were three for nine was Archbishop Wood in the first half. Quick math. Uh, four for 11. That's right. 30-something percent, I can tell you that for sure. <laughs> I think it's 36.3636. Uh, the math guy. Campbell, no good from three. That's a great checkout again by Deuce Maxey without fouling. I want another look at this one here. This yeah. is putting a body on a body. A great job by Maxey. Yeah, and all he needed to do is just screen the player off, and it was going to be wood ball.
Bethea is defended by Wynn. High ball screen over the top. Big rebound there. And Marsilio does it again. Picked away from him, and it'll stay with Springford. Another look there. Man's rebound by Marsilio. Awfully quiet. Yeah, it is. For a championship level talent fight here. And a packed house. That's exactly right, Bruce. It's not like there's nobody here. Bethea nearly had the steal. Skip pass. Nobody checks out on win. And if you let him shoot shots like that, Springford is going to win. Dean gets into the lane. Great take. Physical. Under control. A paint touch and a bucket. That's what Wood needs to do more of. Really just get in the paint there. A little bit higher percentage shot selection. Yeah, and just undercut him the least bit. Dean, a great job to keep that center of gravity, that balance, and the teardrop over the left shoulder. Another lead change. Three of them in the last minute. And the old-fashioned three-point play. Yes. That was the starburst play. I was trying to avoid that. <laughs> E.J. Campbell, full head of steam. Kick out for Zollers. It's good. Two straight triples for Springford. The fourth lead change in the last four possessions. It hangs on the rim. Bethea lost the basketball. And a held ball situation. Boy, tight quarters with these guys with all the intensity, but uh, they're staying under control. There's another look at the melee. All right, this is where John Mosco can be so dangerous with these out-of-bounds plays. Instead, just the safety valve. And a grab is called against Marsilio. That is already the fifth team foul against Springford here in the third quarter. None for Archbishop Wood. Wow. So bonus time for the next three minutes and 55 seconds. That's a long three minutes and 55 seconds, Bruce. Well, and it just, you know, Springford is really going to have to play meticulous on defense here. And Wood should get aggressive. They should go to the basket. Bethea, Josh Verlin had said has missed th three of the free throws that he took in the first half. Three of four, yep. He was one of four, missing three. Yes, that is correct. One of four, missing three, okay. The math checks out. That's official. <laughs> it's a good set. One of four, missing three. <laughs> just making sure we say it to avoid confusion. It just rolled right off the tongue there. And another lead change. Five lead changes in the last five offensive possessions. Fortunate there for Springford. That is a dangerous pass. And I really think a smart move by Wood to really step up the defensive tempo. No doubt. I think you want to take the ball out of E.J. Campbell's hands, right? He's handled the ball well enough for too long. Get it into someone else's hands and see if they can handle it as adroitly as he has. Nickel Dimer called against to here. Howell and the Bronx call. The Bronx cheer comes from the Spring Ford <laughs> side of the stand. First this quarter. That's Allers. Springford patient in the half court. E.J. Campbell. And he's going to get his own rebound. And that should be last touched by Howell. Agree. A lot of contact. They let him play on that one. It's a balancing act. It letting is. Letting a play versus keeping it under control and not letting it get too violent. Yeah. 
hard to argue he did not break the plane of verticality, <laughs> though. Yeah. Win. Yeah. And he's fouled by Milan Dean. Took a big whack across the wrist. And we have a chance, guys, with two made free throws. We're just going to keep the stat going. It would be six lead changes and six <laughs> offensive possessions. Look at you keeping, keeping the numbers rolling. Mental notes, Jeff. Two guys check in for Spring Ford. Oban Machanku, Makanchu, beg your pardon, and then Jordan Marsilio. Josh Verlin talked about it at halftime, and certainly we had it in our notes as well, that Matt Zollers had broken his foot in December, took his time coming back, made sure he was healthy for the stretch run. This Spring Ford team, the number nine seed in District 1, that's a little bit, we'll say, uh, misleading. They, yeah. were, they were upset by that Garnet Valley team. That Garnet Valley team that worked its way all the way to the number two seed. That's right. They had injuries at the time in that game. Garnet Valley almost ended up winning the whole district anyway. But then they won their way back through the loser's bracket to get to this nine seed. Couldn't oh. finish. McConchu pulls it down. Josh Reed had a point blank look. Jeff, I feel similarly about Archbishop Wood. I mean, is Archbishop Wood the third best team out of District 12? No, they are not. But it's how District 12 is run, where yep. Catholic League plays their thing, Public League plays all the way to their title, and then you take top Catholic League against top Public League. Oh. There's Jacob Wynn again. So Archbishop Wood had to be the three seed because Lincoln was the two seed and Roman was the one seed. It's a four-point lead. Maxie couldn't answer, and Spring Ford will slow things down. So to, you have to, a nine to, seed and a three seed, and quite frankly, both of them are underseeded is the overall point. You you just summarized my summation. <laughs> Man, we have had some good ones today. Summarizing summations and one of three shooting or one of four shooting three. Now you're confusing people, yep, Bruce. That's right, Bruce. That's too much. Now, <laughs> just joking. Win with that three is up to 20. EJ Campbell. He avoids the charge that was trying to be set up by Maxi. Bethea, foot on the line, knocked it down. He's, Back to a four-point lead. He's got to start to get hot out there. Well, that's a big shot to go, too. If that doesn't go, you're looking at the third possession or in a row where the shot was quick for Archbishop Wood, a six-point lead instead. Back on the rails here. Chance for a stop that could cut it to one possession late in the third quarter. And a chuck is called. And it should go against Jaleel Bethea to the delight of the Spring Ford fans. Bethea gets attention everywhere he goes. Every time he steps into the gym. The opposition, they... Certainly scout him more than they scout anyone else, Bruce. The opposing fans, they want to get in his head more than they get in anyone else's head. Absolutely right. I mean, because he's the engine that drives that wood team. Great finish and a beautiful out-of-bounds play on the baseline drawn up by Joe Dempsey from his seat on the bench. <laughs> yeah, both coaches picked up technicals right before halftime, so they're both seated for the rest of the game. Green a deep three. Boy, he's been really cold today. He's scoreless, is he not? I think that's right. Makanchu, by the way, great seal, great box out underneath, and it's a six-point lead. E.J. Campbell. Campbell all the way. And it's last touch by Campbell. Good defense there by Deuce Maxi. Campbell wanted the foul, and this could be an issue. A little slow to get up, and now he's okay. Campbell. Hustling back down the floor. Well, let's see if Wood can take advantage of the turnover. Quick check. Green did have two points. A basket in the first quarter. You see right at the end there. The padding that isn't always so padded. Not mm. when you're going full speed. Great hands by Springford. And I like putting this in your pocket here if you're Joe Dempsey. Good job by Campbell, the veteran. He's a senior. Bethea's got to watch himself. Zollers 
Maxi went down, could have been a charge. Three bodies on the floor. And they gave it away. And Campbell puts it in his pocket. Just a great job getting back on defense by the Rams there. It was Puffco that we didn't have a chance to mention that had that nice play. Puffco had a larger role earlier in the year. Some key minutes here, and Deuce Maxey picks up the personal foul. He's been in the mix each of the last three defensive possessions. The first two, he did a great job not to foul. He thought he had earned a charge on the prior possession. This time, a good job by Zollers. Understood where his body was and where Deuce Maxey was on the play. Bob, you've seen a lot more Catholic League than probably anybody in this building, at least across the region I get a sense that Wood is frustrated that their hands are up when there's contact when there's a whistle when there's things aren't going their way do you sense that or do you feel that that's just the kind of par you know, the, the, the yeah. flow of the game and that's just you know who it's, they are it's the flow of the game they're an emotion driven team John Mosco will tell you that he's told us that and he loves that about them it's about harnessing it here over the last eight minutes and five seconds because when they do harness it properly, there may not be a better team in the state of Pennsylvania. But let's give credit to this Ram squad for the defensive effort that they put up there. They still have not really let Wood get in any kind of offensive flow. But they all the way to the hoop. High off the window. Oh. Count it and one. He did get it off in time. And it's a thing of beauty from Jalil Bethea. Well, let's see if Jalil can do the starburst thing. <laughs> That's a heck of a shot. A good call there. Certainly the defender broke the plane of verticality. And this is going to be untimed. So the foul occurred after he released the ball, which was on time. Contact occurred after the clock hit zero, but while he was still in the act of shooting, so that's why you have this untimed free throw for Bethea. And as good of a momentum swing as you can have going into the fourth quarter, Archbishop Wood trails Springford, 45-41 phenomenal game here from Norristown Area High School. Only one team will advance to the state semifinal. That other semifinal will take place later this afternoon between Roman Catholic and Parkland. Stay with us, folks, as we hear from Faulkner Infinity, the sponsor of today's contest. Faulkner Infinity of Willow Grove is the number one Infinity dealer in the region. Faulkner has received the Infinity Award of Excellence given to only 10 dealers nationwide for outstanding customer satisfaction. You'll enjoy our easy, no pressure atmosphere, whether you buy online, in person, or a little of both. We offer loaner vehicles for service or pick up and drop off of your vehicle to make service as convenient as possible. Come find out why. More people choose Faulkner Infinity to be sure. A look inside the Archbishop Wood huddle as they trail by four headed to the fourth quarter. This is an Archbishop Wood sponsored broadcast here on Bob Long Sports. Alex Shevchuk is our man doing it all. Camera and color commentary. Alex, thoughts on that third quarter? Still not a lot of, we'll say, rhythm or flow, but Spring Ford takes a lead at times their largest lead. They got it all the way up to seven. What's the key here in the fourth quarter? I mean, yeah, Bob, Spring Ford Springford's just been doing such a great job of just taking the best possible shot. And their shooter, Jacob Nguyen, has been making every open three that he's taken. I mean, he's been doing such a pivotal job for the Springford team here. And as long as they keep continuing this, as long as they keep continuing this program of what they're doing, taking that best possible shot, kind of getting into Archbishop Wood's heads, kind of making them more emotional. And EJ Campbell just kind of pivoting and flowing the offense they they can win this game it has been a tour day district one for archbishop wood the three seed out of district 12 took down methacton in a game that went all the way to the wire lower marion played step for step with archbishop wood until late in the fourth quarter and now springford the nine seed oh. out of district one turns it over to start the fourth quarter but bruce has that four-point lead yeah and and that's what 
Springford really has to do. They've got to value the basketball big time here in the fourth quarter. They can't give Wood additional possessions to cut into that lead. That's a great teardrop pass to the corner. Beautiful from Mike Green and Jaleel Bethea. That's nearly a layup for him. Oh, man, that's good offense. Bethea starting to get into a rhythm here. And one at the end of the third and the three to start off the fourth. Great Something big cut. to expect. There you go, Matt Zollers. Archbishop Wood fell asleep on the back cut. Yeah, they sure did. Now every possession so magnified here coming down. Milan Dean got to the hole and he turned an ankle. And Dean went down and he tried to pick up the foul. And Archbishop Wood is trying to get a foul and the refs do not give it to them. Now Dean is up though. And he's going to go baseline again. They're going to wave it off. I don't know if I've ever seen something like that. Uh, that that's pretty odd. I mean... <laughs> Uh, oh he fell goodness. down right in front of the official pointing that he had an injury. Right, which again, they don't need to blow that debt. That's not the point I'm talking about. I'm talking about you have Milan Dean putting two hands on the ball handler and then Reed does the same thing as he crossed midcourt and the officials do not give them the call. They're trying to take a foul there. To stop the clock. To stop the clock. And that was not acknowledged or granted. Interesting. Oh, doesn't matter on the inbounds, thankfully. Yep. yep, yep, yep. Bethea for the tie. He just went flying in there. Held ball situation. You're right, Bruce. He launched it as soon as he hit the ground. He knew it was off. It darted into the lane. Got his hands on the loose ball and the rebound and... Just didn't come up with it. Shooter knows, Jeff. Shooter always knows first. But ultimately, his effort gives the ball back to Wood. Hustle plays. Reed against Zollers. Worth the price of admission. Great kick. Howell got the feet set. Zollers able to bring it down. On the ping pong inside. Not for the pain of, fate of heart in the paint right now, Bob. Everybody's banging bodies on one another. To hear Howell picks up the personal foul. First team foul against Archbishop Wood here in the fourth quarter. And they've got to get aggressive out on win. They really have to disrupt him because he's the one that's really running that offense out there. Now does Springford get a little conservative here? I think it's a little too early, Bob. You want to be cautious, but I don't think you want to be ultra conservative. Run what got you here. Wynn nearly lost the ball. This is Matt Zollers, and a timeout is called. Matt Zollers back for the last five contests and five straight wins in that time frame for spring forward. They're looking to add a six and how sweet this would be. This would be going back to the state semifinals for the second year in a row. Again, the last game where Matt Zollers was hurt with that broken foot was the first round of the district playoffs against Garnet Valley. Wow. A Garnet Valley team that went all the way to the district final, lost to Lower Marion. They were the two seed in this tournament. Went down, by the way, on the western side of the bracket to Central York, who still is alive and well. Still is alive, yeah. You, you called that our first broadcast, Archbishop Wood against their first state broadcast at the 6A level that you said, keep an eye on Central York. Yeah, that's a really talented team with Greg Geidinger, Ben Rill, and some others that are going to play at the next level. But again, you think back to that loss, and now... Zollers is healthy, great, but you're behind the eight ball, and they won their way all the way through the playbacks to get to that nine seed. We talked about it earlier in the contest. Both teams underseeded. This is what could have been a state semifinal type of matchup. Ooh. Both these teams, in fact, lost in the state semifinal last year. Only one will get there this year. Big block. Great look, better block. Great help there by Bethea. Just collapsed in. 
Not on my watch. <laughs> Back to live action here as Campbell. Kelly lost it. This is where Wood is so dangerous. Reed, yes! <laughs> on a bash, getting to the rim. Throwing it down. You know, it seemed like when Springford became a little tentative on offense, Wood's gotten back in this game. Zollers turns well. Needs help. McConchu is that. Campbell. Yes! E.J. Campbell with the answer. Bethea. Here we go again, oh, folks. Oh, man. It's a replay of Wednesday night where they're going punch for punch. Wednesday was Archbishop Wood and Lower Marion, and today Springford plays that role. Boy, Bethea really needs to be careful that far away from the basket. Zollers got the mismatch. Great finish. That's a great identifying of a matchup problem. Over Maxi. Bethea at the logo. Just inside the logo. Yes! Wow. We are tied. Oh, my God. Time out. Let's get another look. Jaleel Bethea. Wow. I don't think you can extend the defense out that far. <laughs> well, I called out that he was at the logo with the ball in his hands for a reason. <laughs> what a game. Showing out for Coach for the head coach of Miami here, there is a reason why he is number six in the nation, and he's proven it today against Springford going into the semifinal. This is just an amazing game, Bob. This is an unbelievable contest. Exactly what we wanted. If you're a high school basketball fan, this is the game to either be at or be watching here on Bob Long Sports. And please do make sure that you subscribe to the channel. Like the video, it helps us a lot. And my goodness, anytime you have a chance to be at a game like this one, you know there's a chance for some fireworks. A trip to the state semi on the line. I'm just looking forward to watch the chess match between these two coaches down the stretch. We'll see how Springford handles. They've been going, like you said, Bob, punch for punch. That was a big right hook from Jalil Bethea to tie this game up with four minutes to play. Campbell. Did a nice job not to travel. Great look for Zollers. And Kelly goes up high. The offensive glass, that's usually Archbishop Wood's game. They're getting a taste of the own medicine. And you can see, look at how high they're picking up Bethea now. Oh, oh, beautiful. See you later. Hello. Hello. Tie game. Pick your poison. You come out that far. He is going to take it right to the basket. Split the defenders. What a great crossover. Boy, it's a shame one of these teams is going to have to go home. Win is fouled by Milan Dean. Just the second team foul against Archbishop Wood. Yeah, and I think a good foul there because if he gets to the lane there, really totally disrupts that Wood defense. The one thing we have not seen from Springford is the win getting clean threes looks. Kelly was hit. McConchu count it and one. And Springford is starting to dominate the offensive glass, Jeff. Yeah, they're good fundamental basketball. The big guy inside, it's 6 5. Alex, you've seen a lot of Archbishop Wood basketball. I don't remember many teams getting to the glass the way this Springford team has against the Vikings. I mean, yeah, Bob. I mean, Archbishop Wood has always been good on defensive and offensive rebounds. I mean, in the past years, they did have center who's playing now at East Strasburg University, Carson Howard. But they do have size on the bench, although he is very young. He's number 32, Jaden Jenkins. He is a six foot nine freshman who may see time later in this game if the ball keeps on getting keeps getting taken on the glass by Springford. Well, and again, we know the level of competition that Archbishop Wood plays in the Philadelphia Catholic League. 
Springford challenged themselves in the non-league. Eight of the nine non-league teams that Springford played in the non-league, uh, they have made the state playoffs. A lot of them still going. But they, uh, oh. and Marsilio picks up the personal foul. Boy, it looks like he landed right on his tailbone. Yeah, Marsilio was bodying Jaleel up out beyond the three-point arc, and they've, they're they letting him play. But as you said, Bruce, hard, hard fall. That's a tough matchup for Marsilio. We talked about some of the connections between these two teams. It's a small world in high school basketball, but Joe Dempsey, 15-year head coach at LaSalle High School. John Mosco, he's been at Wood for many years now. Prior to that, coached with Carl Aragale as an assistant at Newman Garetti. Joe Dempsey, after leaving LaSalle, sat on Greg Downer's bench at Lower Marion for three years in what was a tough time for Joe Dempsey, and he credits Greg Downer for giving him that opportunity. Of course, Archbishop Wood saw and beat Lower Marion just on Wednesday night, and now Joe Dempsey has a chance to avenge what Downer <laughs> could not do and beat John Mosco, a familiar foe. Bethea missed his fourth free throw of the night, and he goes one of two. So within a bucket here, 308 remaining. Wow, I mean, I say it a lot, but... Boy, these possessions now so magnified. Full court look, and they give it away. Milan Dean is fouled by E.J. Campbell. Had to give it and send Dean to the line, who is an 80% foul shooter on the year. Great pressure. Campbell just didn't have anybody to get the ball to, and... The swarming defense causes the turnover, the foul, and now a chance to tie the game. Yeah, I think great by Coach Moscow. Really waiting to bring this press out until, you know, bringing out the, the, all the ammunition here down the stretch. Again, Dean misses a foul shot. We have seen Archbishop Wood struggle all day long. A senior class that has been highly heralded. A senior class that went to the state final two years ago. Lost to Roman Catholic. McConshu, after two missed free throws, gets the timeout called. Let's bring you now inside of the broadcast booth here high atop. Northtown Area High School, <laughs> Jeff Sharilla, Bruce Badgley with me, Bob Long, Alex Shevchuk is on the camera. So the Archbishop Wood senior class that I was getting at there two years ago in the state final. The year after that, lost in the state semifinals. Here they are again as seniors and yet to win either a Philadelphia Catholic League championship or a state championship with Josh Reed and Jalil Bethea and Milan Dean. Not that anyone is deserving or earning just getting off the bus of a state championship, but I know that has to be the goal for this class to get out of here with a title of some kind. And it has not been easy as we came through the states. As you said, the tour of District 1, Methacton, tough game. Lower Marion, the number one seed, arguably one of the best teams in the state, 66-64 win. And now you've got a tough Springford team that's got two Division One recruits. They're going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. If they can get through this, guess what? They're only in the semifinals. So it, it's a good group that is continuing to stand up to each test along the way. And now they've got three minutes to figure out how to get past the Springford Rams. And, Bruce, the team that they lost each of the last two years, Roman Catholic two years ago, it was also the Kaolites. Last year, if they could get through this game here today, it will either be Parkland or Roman Catholic in the state semifinals. So some habits die hard. Yeah, but I think, you know, and I mentioned it even the last game. Archbishop Wood under a lot of pressure. Win all alone on the home run toss. And who threw it? <laughs> the quarterback, <laughs> Zollers. Wow. Nobody throws a better home run ball than Matt Zollers. I can promise you that. Who converted that? Jacob Wynn. Thank you. He's not the football player. That one is no good, and that's Isan Bea. Bea, a very low-volume three-point shooter. Let's see if the Rams work some clock. Oh, look at here. To hear Howell. He got it to go. And it's a two-point game. So Bea takes an ill-advised three 
Timeout called by John Moscow. He hasn't taken 23s all season long. And I know he's open, but that can't be the look. Archbishop Wood bails themselves out with great full court pressure and an easy layup in transition. Want to again thank Faulkner Infinity for sponsoring today's contest. This is an Archbishop Wood school sponsored broadcast, but we cannot do this without the support of businesses around the area like Faulkner Infinity. So please support the businesses that are high, supporting those high school athletes, pursuing their dreams, and putting a competitive and compelling game onto your television screen right now. So each team is still a foul to give here before the bonus. And Archbishop Wood has the chance to set up the full court pressure. And this is what it comes down to. Spring Ford has played a great game. They are right in it. This would be considered an upset in most circles. But you know the pressure is going to come. Can Spring Ford break it? Oh, look at that steal. Beautiful. And Campbell and McConchie were not on the same page. Passed up a, a, a shot at a bunny. Bethea again from the logo going to get a lot closer than the logo big finish he takes Zoller off the bounce you expect players like Mathea to take control in situations like this and he sure has in this fourth quarter 145 to go and that's last touch by Deuce Maxi. great pressure by the Vikings and they sense blood in the water here comes the super athletic Milan Dean the star defender to replace Isan Bea so these are the big boys this is the lineup here. The starters are all in for Archbishop Wood. They're looking for a steal to create something in transition. Can Springford draw something up for Jacob Wynn, who has been unbelievable coming off screens and catching and shooting? So here Al took a long look at the scoreboard, sees there's 90 seconds to play, and Springford pulls it out. But honestly, no reason to release the basketball for before our last shot. And well, only because it's hard to hold it for yeah. a minute you, and 17. You, you can't hold it for 90 against this defense. We will see. We're going to bring you back inside the broadcast booth here. Bob Long, Jeff Sharilla, Bruce Badgley here for a state quarterfinal. Boy, Archbishop Wood, we have <laughs> seen this team throughout the state tournament. They know how to give you a compelling game. I like what you said. They smell blood in the water, but they still haven't quite gotten over the hump, but they've got that confidence, and Bethea, as he's done in the past, has taken over the fourth quarter. Yeah, and, you know, spring forward, it looks a little bit like they're trying not to lose. You I know, agree. This fourth quarter, they just haven't had, seemed to have the aggression going toward the basket that they had the rest of the game. They so. did throw a 94-foot home run ball. Well, I get <laughs> that, but I'm seeing in the, in the half-court offense, they've seemed, sure. you know, pretty benign in their approach. Not like they were playing the first three quarters. So let's see what happens. You said home run ball on a basketball court by the football quarter. That's right. <laughs> Makes sense to me. How about you guys? Is he a, is he a pitcher, too? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, Matt Zoller, is, uh, it is tremendous for this Springford community that he is still playing two sports, candidly. Yeah, in, in this day and age when you've got athletes that spend their time, you know, going to camps and other coaches saying, you know, stick with the one that I want you to, 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 prima you know, to prioritize, yeah, two sport athletes, rural Montgomery County, love to see it. A minute 17 remaining on the clock. A trip to the state semifinal on the line. They let that contact go. Archbishop Wood. They have a foul to give with a minute and eight seconds left. Trying to play off two feet, spread the floor, and avoid the double team. You got Mokenchu with Deuce Maxi on him. If they could get him down low. I don't that's not the shot you want, but that could be a mismatch you take advantage of. Oh look at there! It is stolen by Josh Reed. What a look up the floor! Howell! And he's fouled. Oh my! <laughs> that would have brought the house down if that went in. Josh Reed 
all year long. Certainly not the unsung hero, but the clear Robin to Jaleel Bethea's Batman. He makes the big play and the spectacular pass. Great pickpocket and look. And that is why, Bruce... Oh yeah, there is a reason to release the basketball yeah, sometimes. Absolutely, I was gonna, you know, uh, tell Jeff that uh, you know it is pretty tough to hold for ninety <laughs> seconds against these guys. I concur. So now to hear Howell, eleven for nineteen from the foul line this year. None of that matters right now. Two for three on the day. This is their, I believe, first lead since the second quarter. Two for two. Archbishop Wood, they were punched in the mouth. They have a two-point lead. 40 seconds left. And now spring forward. Do they have an answer? Midway through the second was Archbishop Wood's last lead, and now they've got a two-point advantage as we head down the stretch. Earlier in the contest, there were six lead changes on six consecutive possessions. Isan Bea picks up the foul. He gives the foul with 32 seconds left, and now they have no more to give. I am surprised that the foul came that early. I'd yeah. be curious on that strategy. It also allows Springford to get a substitute into the game. Uh, and I agree with Bob. I don't, I don't fault the foul, but it should have been later in the offensive set to make him restart. With less time. Yep. Now any type of foul sends Spring Ford to the line. Zollers pulls it down. Loose ball. Here comes Bea. Jaleel Bethea is fouled, and I don't know. 16 seconds left. I know you got to take a foul, but you take the foul against Jaleel Bethea, the 90% foul shooter. Well, he wasn't going to give the ball up. They, I don't... What, what choice would they have? No, you're right. I Double. Mean, you're either going to give them a, 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 an opportunity to get to the basket or distribute, or you follow them out front. And there was a strip inside against Matt Zollers. He had a wide open look after the offensive rebound. Spectacular active hands by Archbishop Wood was the difference. Bethea calmly knocks down the first. This Archbishop Wood team has been challenged in the fourth quarter each and every game into the final minute. Every game in this state tournament run is gone. It's a two-possession game and a timeout on the floor by Springford. Wasn't it like the last time I checked, Wood was down four, now they're up four. I mean, incredible how quick the table has turned here in this these closing moments with all these talented players on both sides. That Just an incredible game. I would say welcome to Archbishop Wood basketball, Bruce, and this <laughs> is what they do. They find situations where they're not in favor of. They might have been down four, but they push together, stay together emotionally. And they got on that 8 and 0 run, and now they're up four with 16 seconds left in the game. And this is what Coach Mosco does. That's great point, Alex. This is an 8-0 run since the home run ball from Zollers to win to make it a four-point lead. And since then, it's been all defense by Wood, and it's a, a, an appropriate term: survive and advance. Yeah, and there was that, you know, the Rams looking like they didn't want to lose rather than trying to win. I push back a little bit on that, that I, and I know we talked about it when we were on camera. I, I think they were trying to manage the game and still run their half-court sets. They were deliberate through a lot of the contests as well. But to Bruce's point, and I'll push back on your pushback, it <laughs> seemed a little tentative. They weren't as confident. They weren't as aggressively uh, approaching in a cautious way if that makes sense well no time to be cautious now you got to get a look a three would be great Campbell Kelly had two hands on it but they uh, and oh boy that's a problem because with a technical foul he wouldn't be eligible for the next oh, game you need to rein it in and he's doing a good job of that and he'll head back to the line and 
you just would love to lose the first arm swing after something like that. You know you're going to get fouled. You understand the situation. He's a brilliantly talented and smart basketball player. He knows why he's getting fouled there. Yep. You yeah. just would love to kind of lose the initial arm swing. You don't, you don't need to prove. You've proven it on the court. You don't need to prove it after the whistle. Correct. And, and you have to believe that Spring Fork's going to try and maybe bait him into that. Right. They have tried all day. It's too little too late. Archbishop Wood can see the semifinals just nine seconds away. And, Bob, you're going to hustle down there and right. get some post game. If it is Archbishop Wood and looks that way, certainly Bethay. Anyone else we should look out for? Uh, he was Josh really Reed. Th- yeah, but uh, Bethay was the difference at quarter number four. I mean, again, three for three in the state playoffs, Bruce. You nailed it. And yep. here comes Take Jaleel Bethay. Take him out and don't have any chance of that double tech. Win. A deep three is no good. They'll get one more shot off at the horn. And Archbishop Wood has done it again. They trailed into the fourth quarter. They came back. And they won on the back of Jaleel Bethea making winning plays in the final minutes again. On to the state semifinals where they will await the winner of Parkland and Roman Catholic. All right, Bob. Thank you so much as you head down to grab the uh, the winners for some post game. Bruce, Alex, and I will take control. Alex, we're going to ask you to <laughs> keep an eye on Bob. So when he gets down there, we'll be able to get Coach Mosco and hopefully Jaleel Bethea, maybe Milan Dean or Josh Reed on camera. But wow, question, Bruce. Sorry about that. But That's the question right. is, who are your two MVPs of this game? Well, we're, we're obviously, it's Jaleel Bethea. Yeah, I, I'll be honest with you. Um I think Deuce Maxi. I mean, Maxi contributed uh, a lot. I mean, you know, we talk about the role players. I mean, you know, obviously the main guys there, uh, you know, Josh Reed, obviously. But, uh, you know, I like how, you know, Maxi has really been a great role player and his ability to draw that defense out to him because he's been able to contribute has really opened up things for a lot of the team. But in the fourth quarter, I think it was this up-tempo style of wood and um, two coaches down there. Jeff embracing. Bruce, you ready for me down there? Yep. We have Josh Reed and Jaleel Bethea with us. Boy, it's becoming like old hat for you guys. Fourth quarter, winning plays, moving on against a tough District 1 opponent. Josh, let's start with you. How did you guys do it today? Uh, the first half, we make layoffs, make shots that we usually make, foul shots. We came, we came out in the second half more aggressive, more physical than them, and we came up with a W. Jaleel, again, down the stretch, it's you putting the ball in the basket. It's you making the winning plays. It looked like a frustrating contest at times out there for you. How did you refocus and do it when it mattered? Uh, I just feel like the, the first half, it was uh, a bad half, so I just went to half, uh, took a breath, and then I just thought to myself of, like, who I really am, and then I just came back in the second half, and I just did what I did. Josh, you now, you don't know who you'll play next. It could be Roman Catholic. It could be Parkland, but we're not going to have you predict anything or try to project that yet, but it's a tw- tight turnaround. You'll play on Tuesday. You don't know who it'll be. You know, you think back to this game and, and what comes next for you guys as you take in the next 48 hours. Um, we go into tomorrow at practice, taking one day at a time, prepare for their opponent. And, you know, we do our best job to be capable to win the game next, next, this Tuesday. Jaleel, Matt Zollers, a big-time football recruit, one of the best quarterbacks in the country. It looked like he and you took it a little personally that, hey, I'm, I'm the number six player in the country. Hey, I'm the number three quarterback in the country. And it looked like it was a great battle all day long. Walk us through that. Uh... Going into this game, I already knew uh, that, that that he was a trash talker. So I, I really had to just, just come in the game and just really know, like, it's really levels to playing basketball. Stick to your own sport. And I really mean that at heart. Because going into this game, is all competitive. So when we in these four lines, it's all competitive. I don't care who you are at the end of the day. Where you guys are is on to the state semifinals. Congratulations for taking the time to do this. We'll see you guys on Tuesday. Thank you. Thank you.
Jalil Bethea and Josh Reed with us. We got John Mosco coming our way as well. We'll keep it short. John, congratulations. You, Bob. Yeah, another tough one. And on a Saturday afternoon, we got a little, a lot slow start with a 12 o'clock start, you know, but we just stayed defensively. We stayed solid and we kept battling and battling and we turned up a little bit of pressure and, you know, we got the W. Another chance against Joe Dempsey. You guys have known each other from your Catholic League days and you guys both coached in a very intense style. It's, uh, it came through. Let's put it that way. Yes, it did. It was, uh, you know, I coached against Joe. He's a very good friend. He's one of the better guys in this business. You know, I respect him a lot. His teams, he got them really fired up for this game, and they played solid. Great. They had a great game plan to fuse this a little bit with mix-up defense. Um, he knows our league. He knows how we play. And, they, you know, they matched us for 32 minutes. It was a great game. And everybody that paid for a ticket got, you know, got a show. It was a tour day, District 1, for you guys. We know that that tour is, is now over. It's a possibility that Coatesville could come out of the west side of the bracket. But yeah. at least for now, you know you'll get District 11 Parkland or District 12 Roman Catholic. Not that you know those guys too well or anything. But tell me about playing three straight District 1 teams and what each of them brought to the table. Like the last two times, they, they played a the game the right way. They shared a the ball. They do a lot of screening, go screening, moving the ball. They share the ball a lot, and they make shots. So, Congrats on the win. Thank you for doing this, and Archbishop keeps putting these compelling games out there. So well done. Thanks for helping us, Bob. Good job. Back to you guys. Thank you. All right. Well, we got to get out of here quick. Another game coming. Jeff, i tell you what. Really enjoyed it, my friend. Always a pleasure. A, Let's go down to some quick stats. Appreciate it. Uh, Jalil Bethea. 31 points to lead all scores and with that i know bob's going to come here to shut down the broadcast he becomes he cracks the top 10 of the philadelphia catholic league all-time scoring list he moves into ninth place as he passed a couple of players in eddie griffin he's now dropped to 10th michael brooks drops off the top 10 list of the philadelphia catholic league bob as we're going to wrap this up very quickly as bruce said there's another game coming in congratulations to jaleel bethea as the Archbishop Wood Vikings improved to 19-8 and on the year. The Springford Rams, well, their five-game winning streak and their season comes to an end. They drop to 23-8. and We'll bid everybody adieu here from Norristown Area High School. We'll be back for some semifinal action, likely on the NFHS Network. By the way, tune in for these two games that are coming up next. Lancaster Mennonite against Constitution High School on the NFHS Network, SportsStream Premium Network affiliate. Bruce Badgley will be on that call, and same for Parkland versus Roman Catholic. So we'll let them get to that. We'll get the heck out of here. Thanks, everybody, for spending your afternoon with us. Alex Shevchuk, Bruce Badgley, Jeff Sherilla. I'm Bob Long saying so long from Norristown Area High School, the site of another classic. Archbishop Wood, on to the state semifinals.